Hey guys, welcome back. We are finally here. <laughs> we are finally at the last life path number, the life path number nine. And uh, before, as I do with every video, just let me quickly uh, get it over with. If you are new to this series or if you're new to this channel, please stop what you're doing. Go in the beginning of my playlist, watch my how to calculate your life path number video, as well as how to interpret your life path number video, because that will put everything into context. Okay, I said it. <laughs> it's the last time I have to say it, and I'm really excited about that. If you've been following the series, I start every single video like that, so this is like the ninth time. And last video we talked about the Life Path 8, the executive, and please do not forget to let me know what you thought about that. Uh, and today we're going to be doing the 9 Life Path, and the 9 Life Path is the humanitarian. If you are a 9 Life Path, you are here to make a difference in the world. And because of this, uh, this could potentially be a very serious topic or a very serious video. Uh, depending on the person, depending on the life circumstance, there's a lot that goes into numerology. It's not so black and white, it's not so straightforward. But it has the potential to become um, a heavy session when I do the Nine Life Path reading. The Nine Life Path can make a difference in the world either through an inherent global perspective or in simply their interpersonal relationships and it's quite possibly uh, the case that you have both going on. It's quite possible that you impact people's lives, whoever comes into it, whoever comes into your life. Uh, but. In the back of your mind, always have the, the world in mind. Caring about current events, caring about how people's actions are leading to detriment, uh, detrimental effects in others or, or the environment or anything. Uh, I have known many nines who had both, uh, but you don't have to necessarily be because uh, our lives are all so very different because we're born in completely different environments so just keep that in mind uh, throughout all the life paths the nine life path has a certain positivity about them that other people are attracted to people uh, look up to you as a reliable person someone that they can depend on and so because of this they will feel uh, very comfortable around you they will look up to you if you are a nine life path, it's quite possible that you are the best friend that everyone goes to for advice or to confide in or to vent because they trust you. You have this evolved quality, this global perspective, uh, and you, you generally have like a sense of responsibility and people get this, like they will get this from you. And so they will feel like you have your shit together. You may have your shit together, you may not have your shit together, <laughs> but nonetheless, people will see you in this light. So uh, sometimes a funny thing that can happen from this kind of energy is people will ask you if you work there, <laughs> if you're in a store, because they, they see you as a leading type of role. And I often compare the nine to the one because the one is perceived as the leader. And the nine ends up being the leader a lot of the time. The difference is that the one is here to learn the process of becoming the leader. The nine uh, just kind of automatically assumes that role, whether they like it or not, because they've been put in situations where somehow they're the only person capable of handling the situation in the right way or people will expect this out of you because they, they, like I said, see you as someone who has their shit together. Uh, and so whether you like it or not, it's, it's quite possible you'll find yourself in a lot of leading positions in life, whether it be your friends or your family or at work. The nine life path, as I think I said before, is uh, considered the most evolved number out of all the numbers. And this can lead to a spiritual aspect 
to the nine. And I, I really can't identify or I don't like pin down the kind of spirituality that this person will have. But I think that if you're considered the humanitarian and you really do have compassion and, and you care about what's going on in people's lives, then you must be spiritual on some level. You must, you know, be evolved, an evolved person on some level. Because of this, the Nine can be a very insightful person. And I have witnessed very deep insights come from both the Seven and the Nine. The Seven, it was through reflection, quiet reflection. The Seven is a very wise spirituality. Um, the difference between uh, the Seven and the Nine is that the Nine derives its spirituality from interconnectedness. They, they will experience, or they, I at least hope, they experience some sort of uh, divinity through their connections, through other people, and in their you know, place in the world. And that's another thing worth mentioning. Usually the Nine feels very connected on a very visceral level uh, with their family members and with their friends who they consider family. The insights that the Nine Life Path experiences is also heavily anchored in the now moment, in the present. And this brings me to the shadow aspect of the Nine Life Path because when the nine life path experience traumas in their past that they can't overcome, it brings them out of this now moment. It brings them out of the present and they can't live for the now. And then this insight, this evolved person that I've been talking to you about is lost. If the nine can't learn to sit still in the moment and be present, they unfortunately will never be happy. And this can look like a number of different ways. Probably a lot of ways that I don't even have time to list. But it's possible this person will need to constantly distract themselves from the now. Uh, they might not be able to sit still. They may not be able to hold um, a coherent uh, behavioral pattern for a certain amount of time. They may adopt certain behaviors that are unlike them, as one usually does to distract themselves. Whatever the case is, this, when this happens, it will drag them further, further away from the path of service, the path of service. And if the nine doesn't walk in this light, they will never be happy either. If the nine doesn't realize that they are here to be selfless uh, and they never fulfill this purpose, they will never be happy and they might not know why. They may not want to understand why. Uh, you know, like I've said in the five and all the other numbers, people never want to look at themselves. And so it's very easy to not really be aware of this because people don't want to be. <laughs> the nine may be overcome with negativity. They might feel disempowered or disenchanted with the uh, enormity of it all, with the heaviness of just how much things are messed up in today's world. It is a heavy burden to carry, uh, to feel responsible for, you know, all, all this trauma, all these corrupt things that are happening in our world today. And so it's not easy to be selfless. It's much more easy to be selfish. Um, in today's day and age, and with human psychology, like monkeys will look, would, would rather t protect themselves. Uh, and that's just a human thing that we all have to overcome. It's our ego, and we never really face our ego 
And if the nine doesn't face this ego, if that is something that they're struggling with in today's day and age, then this could very much keep them away from this path of service that they're meant to walk down. And I don't want to um, make it sound like it's all the nine life paths faults because these issues are too big for one person. They are. It's not meant to be carried by one person. Uh, but it's, it's each of ours responsibility to, you know, wake up and at least try to not make it a worse place than it already is. You know, there's just by being something or someone that is self-sufficient and, and not adding to the trauma, that's already doing a service. Of course, the nine, if they are walking in their light, they will want to do more than that. They will not want to just be neutral. They will want to be active and take an extra step in whatever they believe in. It's not only easy to become disempowered because of the enormity of the mess, but when we do go out of our way to try and change the world, we don't always see what we want to see, do we? It's so easy to feel like our actions don't make a difference. It's so easy to fall into that uh, d depression of constantly trying to have an impact on something that is that really needs help and we don't always see with our eyes what our actions do. In fact, I would say that most of the time we don't always see exactly how our actions impact the world. I know, for example, that not many people are going to find these videos. And my impacts will probably visually extremely small in the world. However, if you send a message, send a thought, send a video, uh, send an action. You changed someone's day somehow. You picked up a piece of trash. You had a thought that was positive. It doesn't stop. It goes out into the world and it echoes and echoes and echoes forever. And so it's, it, it's, it wouldn't be something that you see with your eyes until decades later. It's, that's a very philosophical uh, explanation that may be hard to understand and it takes a lot of belief it takes a lot of faith and if the nine is afraid of those things too they will stay in their shadows if they don't have any faith that what they're doing is important or that things need to be shown as they are in this light if they're afraid of that it's gonna block them and so this is basically how the nine could potentially be the kind of person rather than wants to um, be active in making a difference is the exact opposite of what you've been listening to. They may think that it's actually an evolved quality, unfortunately, to be more selfish, to have a, a self-preservation um, attitude rather than a connect connectedness attitude rather than seeing how much their ripples affect the world. If the nine life path is the most evolved number, it's quite possible that you've come here to try to evolve. Your soul really made an honest attempt and is making an honest attempt to kind of uh, go into the acceleration lane a bit. Now, what happens though when you are expressing through your shadow? Well, what happens is you stagnate and then you stop growing and that is actual death. A nine life path, honestly as well as all the other life paths, has the potential to experience this death within their body as does everyone. You know, stagnating, you know, you, when you become the reciprocal of the nine, essentially, you are, you're not growing, you're not learning, you're not doing anything, you're having a very passive existence, you're not getting anywhere, you stagnate. 
uh, and you stop, you stop, and you die. Like that, to me, is what actual death is. On a side note for a bit, the number nine itself is a very spooky number. Because in numerology, to get all of the numbers, you do addition. For example, in my How to Calculate Your Life Path Number video, I showed you how you just add up all the numbers and your birthday and it eventually gets reduced to one number. When you put a number in front of the nine, the end result in numerology is that number. So whatever you put next to it is ultimately what ends up being expressed. For example, the number 29 that's going to be a 2 energy, because 2 plus 9 is 11, and then 1 plus 1 is 2, so on and so forth. And so when I do, when I do someone's chart, you could cross out all the 9s, and it will, it will come up with the right number. And there's something about this that I find very spooky, and it reminds me of a lot of things that I've read about the 9, which is how... A lot of people think the Nine has within them somehow qualities of all the numbers, like they could somehow tap into the two really easily and be that, an expression of that, or tap into these energies and so they carry with them the insights and the wisdom of these lessons, or they should anyway, uh, throughout their lives. So that when they come in contact with the en these energies, it's automatically something that they recognize because deep down it's already within themselves and their reflective nature will probably mirror that back to you. When you're with them, I feel like because of this nature, it's quite possible that when you're with a nine, there's some aspect of yourself that is being revealed through them. They're a mirror for you. And so that's another really important uh, person to be in this world in order to change it, is to be a mirror. Um, and you don't have to be a nine life path to have this quality, but I think it could be very easy for a person to have this quality uh, if you're a nine. I had a very hard time trying to find an art for the nine. And that is because art can, any art, any art at all, is a way to give back to humanity if you use it through that intention. It doesn't matter if you're writing or you're painting or you're making music or what have you, you, you can have the attention to give it back to the world and have it leave a positive impact. So I, but I didn't want to say this in this video. Like, that's true, but I really want to, to make a suggestion for people, like a very specific suggestion that they may not have thought of before that could potentially help them. And so eventually I came to the conclusion that any art that is extremely meditative, maybe a little bit repetitive, but it still requires a certain level of creativity, that is ideal for the nine. So for this specifically, I chose jewelry making. Uh, I have, I used to love to bead. I actually have two nines in my chart, so I understand this energy very well, but I used to bead when I was a kid, and it's so amazing because you have all these beautiful options. You have all these different kinds of beads and all these pretty colors, and you can get sets, and you know, you have a little plan, and then while you're doing it, it's a very repetitive action, and it's a, it's, you, you kind of get into a trance sometimes. And then finally, the piece, the necklace or the bracelet or whatever, is done, and you get to give that to someone. Uh, you get to share this with the world, it's, and it's something that they wear. Uh, and I think that could potentially be a very fun way for the nine to tap into their creativity as well as relax and get into this meditative place that they should be in. So uh, yeah, that's that's my recommendation. But this could be something else. This could, this could be knitting, for example, or quilting. 
And quilting would be really cool and knitting would be really cool because you could make clothes or a blanket that makes them warm. You can give that to a person and it provides warmth to another person. So if you're looking for an art in your nine life path or if you just want to develop um, a practice in your life that would be mentally healthy and emotionally healthy, uh, that is my recommendation. Now on to careers. Nines make excellent teachers. And think about it. People look up to them. So when they're in charge of a classroom, the kids will listen. Even if they're not behaving, <laughs> they will probably receive the message and uh, look up to their teachers and really genuinely want to know what they have to say and do the best they can in the classroom. The Nine Life Path is really good at explaining difficult concepts to other people because of this insightful nature about them and because of this evolved quality about them. And because of this reflective nature to them, you know, they get people. They're people-oriented people. <laughs> so when they, they come across a student that needs extra help, for example, they will talk to that person and because of their connectedness with them and with humanity, they will look at the problem and say, well, look at it from this perspective and the kid will get it and the kid will feel like everything's going to be okay and they're going to get through the exam and uh, it's just out of all the life path numbers, when I see the nine, I'm like, you should be teaching, <laughs> you should be teaching somehow. Uh, I also could see the nine as being some sort of physician, some sort of doctor, because of course that's an extremely humanitarian cause. Uh, and then maybe doing something unique with it. Uh, maybe doing something like, um, uh, what's it called it's when they go to other countries? I think it's called Doctors Without Borders or something like that. Or perhaps there's other programs I'm not aware of, I don't know. But uh, I could also see them uh, be a good paramedic. They're extremely reliable in emergencies. So any type of emergency situation, uh, the nine will excel in. Some other possible career paths are animal rescue, conservation, environmental conservation, um, coaches. But that's kind of like because of the teacher angle. Uh, but that's another possibility and it could be like a sports coach but it, it doesn't have to be you could be a life coach you would make an excellent life coach or a fitness coach what have you and last but not least some possibilities are uh, archaeologist sociologist or a diplomat and real quick let me go over the keywords for you they are charity service completion growth, evolution, insightful, altruism, positivity, and influential. The best advice that I can give the nine is to ask for help when you need it. When you feel responsible for everyone and then when people look to you in this way that you should be taking care of everything because you can, when you're in this position in life, you usually need help the most. And this may be very hard for you to um, accept because when you want to help, it may feel like you're doing the opposite when you ask for help, but that's not true. When you need help, you need help. And when you ask for help and you've received that help, guess what? Somewhere down the line, you're going to pay it back. So you're not taking away you are uh, supporting yourself so that you can support other people and there's nothing wrong with that. Another good suggestion for the nine is to find a balance between too much meditation and not enough meditation. So Carrie, what does meditation look like? Well, <laughs> for meditation, honestly, it means something completely different. You know, for me, it was making jewelry or going for a walk or spending time in nature. For other people, it's going to yoga or literally literally a meditation class and sitting with a community of people, which you would very much benefit from because you're so people-oriented. But basically, I recommend this because 
you could fall into this stagnation through either too much meditation where you kind of withdraw from life and spend too much time being the hermit or not having enough meditation when you just want to sprint through life and have a mindless unexamined existence uh, and either way not enough meditation or too much meditation on life and who you are uh, could uh, leave you distraught and away from your purpose of service and away from the now moment which you desperately need uh, it is where your happiness lies uh, if you did not resonate with the the humanitarian so much if you did not resonate with wanting to make a difference so much at least take away the now moment aspect of what i explained because that's good advice for anyone and especially for you so thank you all so much for watching if you watched every single video of this series i love you so much uh, and thank you to all of you who are commenting and liking my videos there's honestly someone out there whoever you are i don't know but like within the same day that i upload a video you like it <laughs> and i don't know if it's if it's the same person every time but i think it must be sometimes because i don't really have that much of a following at all um so thank you <laughs> whoever you are out there thank you for doing that and if you would like a personal reading with me please go to the link in the description uh, that will look like a PDF document that you get to keep for the rest of your life that outlines your whole chart and everything that is important, as well as an hour and a half session with me that not only goes through the chart, but uh, what's going on in your life right now and what angle you want to take this reading from. And as always, uh, subscribe to my channel, like this video, uh, comments below if you were a nine life path, uh, tell me as always things that were true and things that were not true or things that you can educate me about or give me a new perspective on. That is what I'm looking for the most, especially because that is how I learn. So uh, yeah, thank you all again so much and uh, stay tuned for Saturday. I'm posting this on Friday. Today's Friday, but stay tuned for the video that I post after this on Saturday. It's uh, silly. <laughs> it's going to be just for entertainment and uh, it'll be like a little thank you for 100 subscribers. So yeah, I love you guys so much. I hope you're having a lovely day and uh, take care and I love you all. <laughs>